What is delayed implantation? Delayed implantation is a phenomenon that lengthens the gestation period of many mammals. The blastocyst remains dormant while its implantation in the uterine wall is postponed for a period of time lasting from a few weeks to several months. Many mammals, including bears, seals, weasels, badgers, bats, and some deer, use this phenomenon to extend their gestation period through delayed implantation so they give birth at the time of year that offers the best chance of survival for their young. What is delayed implantation? Delayed implantation is a phenomenon that lengthens the gestation period of many mammals. The blastocyst remains dormant while its implantation in the uterine wall is postponed for a period of time lasting from a few weeks to several months. Many mammals, including bears, seals, weasels, badgers, bats, and some deer, use this phenomenon to extend their gestation period through delayed implantation so they give birth at the time of year that offers the best chance of survival for their young. How many eggs does a spider lay? The number of eggs varies according to the species. Some larger spiders lay more than 2,000 eggs. But many tiny spiders lay one or two and perhaps no more than a dozen during their lifetime. Spiders of average size probably lay a hundred or so. Most spiders lay all their eggs at one time and enclose them in a single egg sac. Others lay eggs over a period of time and enclose them in a number of egg sacs. How many eggs does a spider lay? The number of eggs varies according to the species. Some larger spiders lay more than 2,000 eggs. But many tiny spiders lay one or two and perhaps no more than a dozen during their lifetime. Spiders of average size probably lay a hundred or so. Most spiders lay all their eggs at one time and enclose them in a single egg sac. Others lay eggs over a period of time and enclose them in a number of egg sacs. How many eggs are produced by sea urchins? The number of eggs produced by sea urchins is enormous. It has been estimated that a female of the genus Arbacea contains about 8 million eggs. In the much larger genus Echinus the number reaches 20 million. How many eggs are produced by sea urchins?
The number of eggs produced by sea urchins is enormous. It has been estimated that a female of the genus Arbatia contains about 8 million eggs. In the much larger genus Echinus the number reaches 20 million. How long do animals, in particular mammals, live? Of the mammals, humans, and fin whales live the longest. Below is the maximum lifespan for various animal species. How long do animals, in particular mammals, live? Of the mammals, humans, and fin whales live the longest. Below is the maximum lifespan for various animal species. What is the lifespan of a fruit fly? The length of adult life can vary considerably. Under ideal conditions an adult Drosophila melanogaster can live as long as 40 days. In crowded conditions lifespan may drop to 12 days. Under normal laboratory conditions, however, adults generally die after only 6 or 7 days. What is the lifespan of a fruit fly? The length of adult life can vary considerably. Under ideal conditions an adult Drosophila melanogaster can live as long as 40 days. In crowded conditions lifespan may drop to 12 days. Under normal laboratory conditions, however, adults generally die after only 6 or 7 days. How can you tell male and female lobsters apart? The differences between male and female lobsters can only be seen when they are turned on their backs. In the male lobster the two swimmerets, forked appendages used for swimming, nearest the carapace. The solid shell, are hard, sharp, and bony, in the female the same swimmerets are soft and feathery. The female also has a receptacle that appears as a shield wedged between the third pair of walking legs. During mating the male deposits sperm into this receptacle, where it remains for as long as several months until the female uses it to fertilize her eggs as they are laid. How can you tell male and female lobsters apart? The differences between male and female lobsters can only be seen when they are turned on their backs. In the male lobster the two swimmerets, forked appendages used for swimming, nearest the carapace. The solid shell, are hard, sharp, and bony, in the female the same swimmerets are soft and feathery. 
The female also has a receptacle that appears as a shield wedged between the third pair of walking legs. During mating the male deposits sperm into this receptacle, where it remains for as long as several months until the female uses it to fertilize her eggs as they are laid. What is a mermaid's purse? Mermaid's purses are the protective cases in which the eggs of dogfish, skates, and rays are released into the environment. The rectangular purse is leathery and has long tendrils streaming from each corner. The tendrils anchor the case to seaweed or rocks. Where the case is protected during the six to nine months it takes for the embryos to hatch. Empty cases often wash up on beaches. What is a mermaid's purse? Mermaids' purses are the protective cases in which the eggs of dogfish, skates, and rays are released into the environment. The rectangular purse is leathery and has long tendrils streaming from each corner. The tendrils anchor the case to seaweed or rocks. Where the case is protected during the six to nine months it takes for the embryos to hatch. Empty cases often wash up on beaches. How is the gender of alligator embryos determined? The gender of an alligator is determined by the temperature at which the eggs are incubated. High temperatures of 90 degrees to 93 degrees Fahrenheit, 32 degrees to 34 degrees Celsius, result in males. Low temperatures of 82 degrees to 86 degrees Fahrenheit, 28 degrees to 30 degrees Celsius, yield females. This determination takes place during the second and third week of the two-month incubation. Further temperature fluctuations before or after this time do not alter the gender of the young. The heat from the decaying matter on top of the nest incubates the eggs. How is the gender of alligator embryos determined? The gender of an alligator is determined by the temperature at which the eggs are incubated. High temperatures of 90 degrees to 93 degrees Fahrenheit, 32 degrees to 34 degrees Celsius, result in males. Low temperatures of 82 degrees to 86 degrees Fahrenheit, 28 degrees to 30 degrees Celsius, yield females. This determination takes place during the second and third week of the two-month incubation. Further temperature fluctuations before or after this time do not alter the gender of the young. The heat from the decaying matter on top of the nest incubates the eggs. What is unique about egg incubation in some amphibians?
Unlike most toads and frogs the female Suriname toad, Pipa Pipa, carries her eggs in special pockets in the skin on her back. Each egg develops in its own pocket in the female's skin. The tadpole's tails are plugged into the mother's system. Similar to the placenta of mammals, exchanging nutrients and gases. The tadpoles develop quickly, undergoing metamorphosis while still in the pockets. Upon transformation into miniature frogs, they break free of their pocket walls to begin independent lives. What is unique about egg incubation in some amphibians? Unlike most toads and frogs the female Suriname toad, Pipa Pipa, carries her eggs in special pockets in the skin on her back. Each egg develops in its own pocket in the female's skin. The tadpole's tails are plugged into the mother's system. Similar to the placenta of mammals, exchanging nutrients and gases. The tadpoles develop quickly, undergoing metamorphosis while still in the pockets. Upon transformation into miniature frogs, they break free of their pocket walls to begin independent lives. What is the importance of an external egg in reproduction? Species that have an external egg usually produce a greater number of zygotes. Because mating between males and females is not required for successful reproduction. The external egg of most species has a leathery outer covering to prevent desiccation. What is the importance of an external egg in reproduction? Species that have an external egg usually produce a greater number of zygotes. Because mating between males and females is not required for successful reproduction. The external egg of most species has a leathery outer covering to prevent desiccation. What are the main types of receptors? Receptor cells are cells that receive stimuli. Each type of receptor responds to a particular stimulus. The five main types of receptors are pain receptors, thermoreceptors, mechanoreceptors, chemoreceptors, and electromagnetic receptors. Pain receptors are probably found in all animals. However, it is difficult to understand non-human perception of pain. Pain often indicates danger, and the animal or individual retreats to safety. Thermoreceptors in the skin are sensitive to changes in temperature. Thermoreceptors in the brain monitor the temperature of the blood to maintain proper body temperature. Mechanoreceptors are sensitive to touch and pressure, sound waves, and gravity. The sense of hearing relies on mechanoreceptors. Chemoreceptors are responsible for taste and smell. 
electromagnetic receptors are sensitive to energy of various wavelengths including electricity, magnetism, and light. The most common types of electromagnetic receptors are photoreceptors that detect light and control vision. How much electricity does an electric eel generate? An electric eel, Electrophorus electricus, has current producing organs made up of electric plates. Modified muscle cells, on both sides of its vertebral column running almost its entire body length. The charge on the average of 350 volts. But as great as 550 volts is released by the central nervous system. The shock consists of 4 to 8 separate charges. Each of which lasts only 2 to 3 thousandths of a second. These shocks, used as a defense mechanism can be repeated up to 150 times per hour without any visible fatigue to the eel. The most powerful electric eel, found in the rivers of Brazil, Colombia, Venezuela, and Peru, produces a shock of 400 to 650 volts. How does the dentition of animals reflect their diet? Herbivores have sharp incisors to bite off blades of grass and other plant matter. They also have a system of flat premolas and molars for grinding and crushing grasses and plant matter. Carnivores have pointed incisors and enlarged canine teeth to tear off pieces of meat. Their premolas and molars are jagged to aid in chewing flesh. Omnivores have non-specialized teeth to accommodate a diet of both plant material and animals. What is the difference between ectotherms and endotherms? Ectotherms, also known as cold-blooded animals, warm their bodies by absorbing heat from their surroundings. These animals have large variations in normal body temperature due to their changing environment. Most invertebrates, fishes, reptiles, and amphibians are ectotherms. The body temperature of endotherms, also known as warm-blooded animals, depends on the heat produced by the animal's metabolism. Mammals, birds, some fishes, and some insects are endotherms. Their normal body temperature is Fairly constant even when there are vast differences in the temperature of their environment. How can you tell male and female lobsters apart? The differences between male and female lobsters can only be seen when they are turned on their backs. In the male lobster the two swimmerets, forked appendages used for swimming, nearest the carapace. The solid shell, are hard, sharp, and bony, in the female the same swimmerets are soft and feathery. The female also has a receptacle that appears as a shield wedged between the third pair of walking legs. 
During mating the male deposits sperm into this receptacle, where it remains for as long as several months until the female uses it to fertilize her eggs as they are laid. What is a mermaid's purse? Mermaids' purses are the protective cases in which the eggs of dogfish, skates, and rays are released into the environment. The rectangular purse is leathery and has long tendrils streaming from each corner. The tendrils anchor the case to seaweed or rocks. Where the case is protected during the six to nine months it takes for the embryos to hatch. Empty cases often wash up on beaches. How are taste and smell related? By convention, air-breathing vertebrates, including humans, associate taste with materials that come in direct contact with the animal, usually through the mouth. By contrast, smell is associated with substances that reach the animal from a distance, usually through the nose. However, the distinction between the two becomes blurred when considering animals that live in water. Although fishes have well-developed chemoreceptors, scientists generally do not refer to the senses of taste and smell in fishes. How do continuous feeders differ from discontinuous feeders? Continuous feeders, also known as filter feeders, are aquatic animals that constantly feed by having water filled with food particles, e. g. small plankton, or fishes, entering through the mouth. Continuous feeders do not need a storage area, such as a stomach, for food. Discontinuous feeders must hunt for food on a regular basis. They need a storage area to house food until it is digested. Where does respiration take place? Different types of animals have different respiratory organs for gas exchange. Four 286 types of respiratory organs are, 1, skin, 2, gills, 3, trachea, and 4, lungs. Many invertebrates and some vertebrate animals, including amphibians, breathe through their skin. Many of the animals that breathe through their skin, a process known as cutaneous respiration, are small, long, and flattened for example, earthworms and flatworms. All animals that rely on their skin for respiration live in moist, damp places in order to keep their body surfaces moist. Capillaries Small blood vessels, bring blood rich in carbon dioxide and deficient in oxygen to the skin's surface, where gaseous exchange takes place via diffusion. Gills may be external extensions of the body surface such as 
those found in aquatic insect larvae and some aquatic amphibians. Diffusion of oxygen occurs across the gill surface into capillaries. While carbon dioxide diffuses out of the capillaries into the environment. Fish and some other marine animals have internal gills. Water enters the animals through the mouth. Then flows over the gills in a steady stream and out through gill slits. Although some animals with gills spend part of the time on land. They all must spend some time in moist, wet environments for the gills to function. Lungs are internal structures found in most terrestrial animals where gas exchange occurs. The lungs are lined with moist epithelium to avoid their becoming desiccated. Some animals, including lungfish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals, have special muscles to help move air in and out of the lungs. Some animals have lungs connected to the outside surface with special openings. And do not require special muscles to move air in and out of the lungs. Insects have a system of internal tubes, called tracheae. That lead from the outside world to internal regions of the body via spiracles. Gaseous exchange takes place in the trachea. Some insects rely on muscles to pump the air in and out of the trachea. While in others the process is a passive exchange of gases. Some spiders have book lungs in addition to trachea. Book lungs are hollow, leaf-like structures through which the blood flows. These lungs hang in an open space that is connected to a tube. The other side of the tube is in open contact with the air. How sensitive is the hearing of birds? In most species of birds the most important sense after sight is hearing. Birds ears are close to their bodies and covered with feathers. However, the feathers covering the ears do not have barbules, which would obstruct sound. Ears of different heights allow the bird to locate of sound. Nocturnal raptors such as the great horned owl have a very well developed sense of hearing in order to be able to capture their prey in total darkness. How long do animals, in particular mammals, live? Of the mammals, humans, and fin whales live the longest. Below is the maximum lifespan for various animal species. Do animals have color vision? Most reptiles, fishes, insects, and birds appear to have a well-developed color sense. Most mammals are colorblind. Apes and monkeys have the ability to tell colors apart. Dogs and cats seem to be colorblind and only see shades of black, white, and gray.
How is the gender of alligator embryos determined? The gender of an alligator is determined by the temperature at which the eggs are incubated. High temperatures of 90 degrees to 93 degrees Fahrenheit, 32 degrees to 34 degrees Celsius, result in males. Low temperatures of 82 degrees to 86 degrees Fahrenheit, 28 degrees to 30 degrees Celsius, yield females. This determination takes place during the second and third week of the two-month incubation. Further temperature fluctuations before or after this time do not alter the gender of the young. The heat from the decaying matter on top of the nest incubates the eggs. What are the three types of photoreceptors among invertebrates? There are three different types of eyes. Represented by different types of photoreceptors, among invertebrates. They are, 1, eye cup, 2, compound eye and 3, single lens eye. The eye cup is a cluster of photoreceptor cells that partially shield adjacent photoreceptor cells. The compound eye consists of many tiny light detectors, photoreceptors. Crayfish, crabs, and nearly all insects have compound eyes. Single lens eyes, found in cephalopods such as squids and octopi, are similar to cameras. They have a small opening, the pupil, through which light enters. What is an organ system? An organ system is a group of organs working together to perform a vital body function. Vertebrate animals have 12 major organ systems. What are the main organs of the digestive system and their function? The digestive system includes the mouth, alimentary canal, or gastrovascular cavity. Esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and anus. The mouth is the opening through which food is ingested. In animals with a second opening for elimination, the digestive system contains an alimentary canal. A tube allowing for the passage of food from the mouth to the anus. In contrast, animals with only one opening have a gastrovascular cavity that serves as the site of digestive activities. The esophagus is another channel through which food passes on the way to the stomach. The stomach, or crop in certain species, such as birds, stores food and is the primary site of chemical digestion. Following digestion in the stomach where food is broken down with acid and enzymes. The food passes into the small intestine. Nutrients are absorbed via the intestine. Much shorter than the small intestine, though greater in diameter, is the large intestine, also called the colon. Here, 
the solid material remaining after digestion is compacted and then eliminated via the anus. What is the lifespan of a fruit fly? The length of adult life can vary considerably. Under ideal conditions an adult Drosophila melanogaster can live as long as 40 days. In crowded conditions lifespan may drop to 12 days. Under normal laboratory conditions, however, adults generally die after only 6 or 7 days. How many eggs does a spider lay? The number of eggs varies according to the species. Some larger spiders lay more than 2,000 eggs. But many tiny spiders lay one or two and perhaps no more than a dozen during their lifetime. Spiders of average size probably lay a hundred or so. Most spiders lay all their eggs at one time and enclose them in a single egg sac. Others lay eggs over a period of time and enclose them in a number of egg sacs. How do rodents, rabbits, and hares digest cellulose? Unlike cows, which have a rumen to digest cellulose, rodents, rabbits, and hares have a cecum, a large pouch to digest cellulose with the assistance of microorganisms. The cecum is located at the junction between the small and large intestines. It is impossible for these animals to regurgitate the contents of their stomachs. Like ruminants, because the cecum is located beyond the stomach. Instead, these animals pass their food through there. Digestive tract a second time by ingesting their feces. When feces pass through the digestive tract, it is possible for these animals to absorb the nutrients produced by the microorganisms in the cecum. Which mammal has the shortest gestation period? Which one has the longest period? Gestation is the period of time between fertilization and birth in oviparous animals. The shortest gestation period known among mammals is 12 to 13 days, shared by three marsupials. The American or Virginian opossum, Didelphys marsupialis, the rare water opossum, or Yapak, Chironectes minimus. Of Central and Northern South America, and the Eastern native cat, Dossi urus viverinus, of Australia. The young of each of these marsupials are born while still immature, and complete their development in the ventral pouch of their mother. While 12 to 13 days is the average, the gestation period is sometimes as short as 8 days. The longest gestation period for a mammal is that of the African elephant. Loxodonta africana, with an average of 660 days and a maximum of 760 days.
How many eggs are produced by sea urchins? The number of eggs produced by sea urchins is enormous. It has been estimated that a female of the genus Arbatia contains about 8 million eggs. In the much larger genus Echinus the number reaches 20 million. What are the functions of the circulatory system? The primary function of the circulatory system is to transport oxygen and nutrients to the all the cells of an organism. The circulatory system also transports wastes from the cells to waste disposal organs, such as the lungs for carbon dioxide and the kidneys for other metabolic wastes. In addition, the circulatory system plays a vital role in maintaining homeostasis. What is unique about egg incubation in some amphibians? Unlike most toads and frogs the female Suriname toad, Pipa Pipa, carries her eggs in special pockets in the skin on her back. Each egg develops in its own pocket in the female's skin. The tadpole's tails are plugged into the mother's system. Similar to the placenta of mammals, exchanging nutrients and gases. The tadpoles develop quickly, undergoing metamorphosis while still in the pockets. Upon transformation into miniature frogs, they break free of their pocket walls to begin independent lives. How do air-breathing mammals such as whales and seals dive underwater for extended periods of time? Seals and whales are able to dive underwater for extended periods of time because they are able to store oxygen. While humans store 36% of their oxygen in their lungs and 51% in the blood. Seals store only approximately 5% of their oxygen in their lungs and 70% in their blood. They also store more oxygen in the muscle tissue 25%. Compared with only 13% in human muscle tissue. While underwater, these mammals' heart rates and oxygen consumption rates decrease. Allowing some species to remain underwater for up to 20 minutes at a time. Can animals hear different sound frequencies than humans? The frequency of a sound is the pitch. Frequency is expressed in hertz, hertz. Sounds are classified as infrasounds, below the human range of hearing, sonic range. Within the range of human hearing, an ultrasound, above the range of human hearing. What are the steps of food processing for animals?
The first step is for animals to ingest food. The food is then broken down via the digestive process into molecules that the organism can absorb for energy. Once the food is digested, it is absorbed through the digestive tract to provide energy for the organism. The final step of food processing is elimination. During elimination, undigested material is passed out of the digestive tract. How do animals and people identify smells? The sense of smell allows animals and humans as well as other organisms to identify food, mates, and predators. This sense also provides sensory pleasure, e. G, flowers, and warnings of danger, example chemical dangers. There are specialized receptor cells in the nose that have proteins that bind chemical odor ants and cause the receptor cells to send electrical signals to the olfactory bulb of the brain. Cells in the olfactory bulb relay this information to olfactory areas of the forebrain to generate perception of smells. What is delayed implantation? Delayed implantation is a phenomenon that lengthens the gestation period of many mammals. The blastocyst remains dormant while its implantation in the uterine wall is postponed for a period of time lasting from a few weeks to several months. Many mammals, including bears, seals, weasels, badgers, bats, and some deer, use this phenomenon to extend their gestation period through delayed implantation so they Give birth at the time of year that offers the best chance of survival for their young. What is respiration? Respiration is the exchange of gases, oxygen and carbon dioxide, between an animal and its environment. There are three phases to the process of respiration, gas exchange 1, breathing. When an animal inhales oxygen and exhales carbon dioxide, 2, transport of gases via the blood. Circulatory system, to the body's tissues, and 3, at the cellular level. When the cells take in oxygen from the blood and in return add carbon dioxide to the blood. Why do cows have four stomachs? Cows have four stomachs in order to process their low-quality diet of grass. The four sections are, 1, the rumen, 2, the reticulum, 3, the omasum, and 4, the abomasum. Cows are a type of mammal known as a ruminant. Ruminants eat rapidly and do not chew much of their food completely before they swallow it. The liquid part of their food enters the reticulum first, while the solid part of their food enters the rumen, 
where it softens. Bacteria in the rumen initially break the food material down as a first step in digestion. Ruminants later regurgitate the partially liquefied plant parts into the mouth. Where they continue to munch it in a process known as chewing their cud. Cows chew their cud about 6 to 8 times per day. Spending a total of 5 to 7 hours in rumination. The chewed cud goes directly into the other chambers of the stomach. Where various microorganisms assist in further digestion. Herbivores have a longer small intestine to allow maximum time for the absorption of nutrients. What is normal body temperature? Normal body temperature is the acceptable temperature for an animal. The following chart identifies normal body temperature for a variety of ectotherms and endotherms. Which animal has the longest gestation period? The animal with the longest gestation period is not a mammal, it is the viviparous amphibian. The alpine black salamander, which can have a gestation period of up to 38 months at altitudes above 4,600 feet. 1,402 m, in the Swiss Alps, it bears two fully metamorphosed young. What is the importance of an external egg in reproduction? Species that have an external egg usually produce a greater number of zygotes. Because mating between males and females is not required for successful reproduction. The external egg of most species has a leathery outer covering to prevent desiccation. How are animals classified based on what they eat? Animals are classified based on whether they eat plants, other animals, or a combination of both. Animals that eat only plant matter are called herbivores. From the Latin herba, meaning green crop, and vorus, meaning devouring. Examples of herbivores are cattle, deer, and many aquatic species that eat algae. Animals that eat other animals are called carnivores. From the Latin carn, meaning flesh, and vorus, meaning devouring. Lions, sharks, snakes, and hawks are examples of carnivores. Animals that eat both plants and other animals are called omnivores. From the Latin omnis, meaning all and vorus, meaning devouring. Humans, crows, and raccoons are examples of omnivores. How do fish swimming in a school change their direction simultaneously? The movements of a school of fish, which confuse predators. 
happen because the fish detect pressure changes in the water. The detection system, called the lateral line, is found along each side of the fish's body. Along the line are clusters of tiny hairs inside cups filled with a jelly-like substance. If a fish becomes alarmed and turns sharply, it causes a pressure wave in the water around it. This wave pressure deforms the jelly in the lateral line of nearby fish. The deformation moves the hairs that trigger nerves. And a signal is sent to the brain telling the fish to turn. Which insect has the best sense of smell? Giant male silk moths, Bombyx mori, may have the best sense of smell in the world. Their antennae are covered with about 65,000 tiny bristles. Most of the bristles are chemoreceptors. The moths can smell a female's perfume nearly 7 miles 11 kilometers away. Which birds lay the largest and smallest eggs? The elephant bird, Epiornis maximus, an extinct flightless bird of Madagascar. Also known as the giant bird or rock, laid the largest known bird eggs. Some of these eggs measured as much as 13.5 in, 34 centimeters, in length and 9.5 in, 24 centimeters, in diameter. The largest egg produced by any living bird is that of the North African ostrich, Struthio camelus. The average size is 6 to 8 in, 15 to 20.5 centimeters, in length and 4 to 6 in, 5 to 15 centimeters, in diameter. The smallest mature egg, measuring less than 0.39 in, 1 centimeter, in length, is that of the vervain hummingbird, Melisuga minima, of Jamaica. Generally speaking, the larger the bird, the larger the egg. However, when compared with the bird's body size, the ostrich egg is one of the smallest eggs. While the hummingbird's egg is one of the largest. The kiwi bird of New Zealand lays the largest egg relative to body size of any living bird. Its egg weighs up to 1 pound 0.5 kilograms. Which birds lay the largest and smallest eggs? The elephant bird, Epiornis maximus, an extinct flightless bird of Madagascar. Also known as the giant bird or rock, laid the largest known bird eggs. Some of these eggs measured as much as 13.5 in, 34 centimeters, in length and 9.5 in, 24 centimeters, in diameter. The largest egg produced by any living bird is that of the North African ostrich, Struthio camelus. The average size is 6 to 8 in, 15 to 20.5 centimeters, in length and 4 to 6 in, 5 to 15 centimeters, in diameter. The smallest mature egg, measuring less than 0.39 in, 1 centimeter, in length, is that of the vervain hummingbird, Melisuga minima, of Jamaica.
Generally speaking, the larger the bird, the larger the egg. However, when compared with the bird's body size, the ostrich egg is one of the smallest eggs. While the hummingbird's egg is one of the largest. The kiwi bird of New Zealand lays the largest egg relative to body size of any living bird. Its egg weighs up to 1 pound 0.5 kilograms. What is unusual about the way the emperor penguin's eggs are incubated? Each female emperor penguin, Aptenidites fers teri, lays one large egg. Initially, both sexes share in incubating the egg by carrying it on his or her feet covered with a fold of skin. After a few days of passing the egg back and forth, the female leaves to feed in the open water of the Arctic Ocean. Balancing their eggs on their feet, the male penguins shuffle about the rookery. Periodically huddling together for warmth during blizzards and frigid weather. If an egg is inadvertently orphaned, a male with no egg will quickly adopt it. Two months after the female's departure, the chick hatches. The male feeds it with a milky substance he regurgitates until the female returns. Now padded with blubber. The females take over feeding the chicks with fish they have stored in their crops. The females do not return to their mate, and own offspring, however. But wander from male to male until one allows her to take his chick. It is then the male's turn to feed in open water and restore the fat layer they lost while incubating. What is unusual about the way the emperor penguin's eggs are incubated? Each female emperor penguin Aptenidites fers teri, lays one large egg. Initially, both sexes share in incubating the egg by carrying it on his or her feet covered with a fold of skin. After a few days of passing the egg back and forth, the female leaves to feed in the open water of the Arctic Ocean. Balancing their eggs on their feet, the male penguins shuffle about the rookery. Periodically huddling together for warmth during blizzards and frigid weather. If an egg is inadvertently orphaned, a male with no egg will quickly adopt it. Two months after the female's departure, the chick hatches. The male feeds it with a milky substance he regurgitates until the female returns. Now padded with blubber. The females take over feeding the chicks with fish they have stored in their crops. The females do not return to their mate, and own offspring, however. But wander from male to male until one allows her to take his chick. It is then the male's turn to feed in open water and restore the fat layer they lost while incubating. What are some animals that have pouches? Marsupials, meaning pouched animals. 
differ from all other living mammals in their anatomical and physiological features of reproduction. Most female marsupials kangaroos, bandicoots, wombats, banded anteaters, koalas, possums, wallabies. Tasmanian devils, etc. have an abdominal pouch called a marsupium, in which their young are carried. In some small terrestrial marsupials, however, the marsupium is not a true pouch but merely a fold of skin around the mammy, milk nipples. The short gestation period in marsupials, in comparison to other similarly sized mammals, allows their young to be born in an undeveloped state. Consequently, these animals have been viewed as primitive or second class mammals. However, some scientists now see that the reproductive process of marsupials has an advantage over that of placental mammals. A female marsupial invests relatively few resources during the brief gestation period. More so during the lactation, nursing period, when the young are in the marsupium. If the female marsupial loses its young, it can conceive again sooner than a placental mammal in a comparable situation. What are some animals that have pouches? Marsupials, meaning pouched animals, differ from all other living mammals in their anatomical and physiological features of reproduction. Most female marsupials kangaroos, bandicoots, wombats, banded anteaters, koalas, possums, wallabies. Tasmanian devils, etc. have an abdominal pouch called a marsupium, in which their young are carried. In some small terrestrial marsupials, however, the marsupium is not a true pouch but merely a fold of skin around the mammy, milk nipples. The short gestation period in marsupials, in comparison to other similarly sized mammals, allows their young to be born in an undeveloped state. Consequently, these animals have been viewed as primitive or second-class mammals. However, some scientists now see that the reproductive process of marsupials has an advantage over that of placental mammals. A female marsupial invests relatively few resources during the brief gestation period. More so during the lactation, nursing period, when the young are in the marsupium. If the female marsupial loses its young, it can conceive again sooner than a placental mammal in a comparable situation. Which mammals lay eggs and suckle their young? The duck-billed platypus, Ornithorhynchus anatinus, the short-nosed echidna or spiny anteater. Tachyglossus aculeatus, and the long-nosed echidna, Zaglossus bruigeni, indigenous to Australia. Tasmania, and New Guinea, respectively are the only three species of mammals that lay eggs. A non-mammalian feature, but suckle their young, a mammalian feature. These mammals, order Monotremata, resemble reptiles in that they lay rubbery. 
shell-covered eggs that are incubated and hatched outside the mother's body. In addition, they resemble reptiles in their digestive, reproductive, and excretory systems and in a number of anatomical details, eye structure. Presence of certain skull bones, pectoral shoulder girdle and rib and vertebral structures. They are, however, classed as mammals because they have fur and a four-chambered heart. Nurse their young from gland milk, are warm-blooded, and have some mammalian skeletal features. Which mammals lay eggs and suckle their young? The duck-billed platypus, Ornithorhynchus anatinus, the short-nosed echidna or spiny anteater. Tachyglossus aculeatus, and the long-nosed echidna, Zaglossus bruigeni, indigenous to Australia. Tasmania, and New Guinea, respectively are the only three species of mammals that lay eggs. A non-mammalian feature, but suckle their young, a mammalian feature. These mammals, order Monotremata, resemble reptiles in that they lay rubbery. Shell-covered eggs that are incubated and hatched outside the mother's body. In addition, they resemble reptiles in their digestive, reproductive, and excretory systems and in a number of anatomical details, eye structure. Presence of certain skull bones, pectoral shoulder girdle and rib and vertebral structures. They are, however, classed as mammals because they have fur and a four-chambered heart. Nurse their young from gland milk, are warm-blooded, and have some mammalian skeletal features. What is the function of the skeletal system? The skeletal system is a multifunctional system. The skeletal system provides support, allows an animal to move, and protects the internal organs and soft parts of an animal's body. What is the function of the skeletal system? The skeletal system is a multifunctional system. The skeletal system provides support, allows an animal to move, and protects the internal organs and soft parts of an animal's body. What are the three main types of skeletal systems? The three main types of skeletal systems are hydrostatic skeleton, exoskeleton, and endoskeleton. A hydrostatic skeleton consists of fluid under pressure. This type of skeletal system is most common in soft, flexible animals such as hydras, planarians, and earthworms and other segmented worms. Hydras and planarians have a fluid-filled gastrovascular cavity. The body cavity, or chylome, of an earthworm is also fluid-filled. Many aquatic and certain terrestrial animals have an exoskeleton. 
The exoskeleton is rigid and hard. Mollusks have an exoskeleton made of calcium carbonate. It grows with the animal during its entire lifetime. Another type of exoskeleton common among insects and arthropods is made from chitin. Chitin is a strong flexible nitrogenous polysaccharide. While it provides excellent protection and allows for a large variety of movements. It does not grow with the animal. When an animal outgrows its skeleton. It must shed its skeleton and replace it with a larger one in a process known as molding. An endoskeleton consists of bone and cartilage and grows with the animal throughout its life. It stores calcium salts and blood cells and consists of hard or leathery. Supporting elements situated among the soft tissues of an animal. Although most common among vertebrates, certain invertebrates such as sponges, sea stars, sea urchins, and other echinoderms have an endoskeleton of hard plates beneath their skin. This type of skeletal system allows for a wider range of movement than do the other two. What are the three main types of skeletal systems? The three main types of skeletal systems are hydrostatic skeleton, exoskeleton, and endoskeleton. A hydrostatic skeleton consists of fluid under pressure. This type of skeletal system is most common in soft, flexible animals such as hydras, planarians, and earthworms and other segmented worms. Hydras and planarians have a fluid-filled gastrovascular cavity. The body cavity, or chylome, of an earthworm is also fluid-filled. Many aquatic and certain terrestrial animals have an exoskeleton. The exoskeleton is rigid and hard. Mollusks have an exoskeleton made of calcium carbonate. It grows with the animal during its entire lifetime. Another type of exoskeleton common among insects and arthropods is made from chitin. Chitin is a strong flexible nitrogenous polysaccharide. While it provides excellent protection and allows for a large variety of movements. It does not grow with the animal. When an animal outgrows its skeleton, it must shed its skeleton and replace it with a larger one in a process known as molding. An endoskeleton consists of bone and cartilage and grows with the animal throughout its life. It stores calcium salts and blood cells and consists of hard or leathery. Supporting elements situated among the soft tissues of an animal. Although most common among vertebrates, certain invertebrates such as sponges, sea stars, sea urchins, and other echinoderms have an endoskeleton of hard plates beneath their skin. This type of skeletal system allows for a wider range of movement than do the other two. What is the chemical composition of chitin? Chitin, found in the exoskeletons of insects and other arthropods, is a glucosamine polysaccharide with the formula of C30H50O19N4 and a molecular weight of 770.42.
The basic units of this substance are linked together by condensation reactions to make up long chains. Hydrogen bonds link the chains together and help make chitin rigid and strong. It is a white, amorphous, semi-transparent mass that is insoluble in common solvents like water and alcohol. What is the chemical composition of chitin? Chitin, found in the exoskeletons of insects and other arthropods, is a glucosamine polysaccharide with the formula of C30H50O19N4 and a molecular weight of 770.42. The basic units of this substance are linked together by condensation reactions to make up long chains. Hydrogen bonds link the chains together and help make chitin rigid and strong. It is a white, amorphous, semi-transparent mass that is insoluble in common solvents like water and alcohol. What are the upper and lower shell of a turtle called? The turtle, order Testudinas, uses its shell as a protective device. The upper shell is called the dorsal carapace and the lower shell is called the ventral plastron. The shell sections are referred to as the scutes. The carapace and the plastron are joined at the sides. What are the upper and lower shell of a turtle called? The turtle, order Testudinas, uses its shell as a protective device. The upper shell is called the dorsal carapace and the lower shell is called the ventral plastron. The shell sections are referred to as the scutes. The carapace and the plastron are joined at the sides. How much weight can an ant carry? Ants are incredibly strong in relation to their size. Most ants can carry objects 10 to 20 times their own weight. And some ants can carry objects up to 50 times their own weight. Ants are able to carry these objects great distances and even climb trees while carrying them. This is comparable to a 100-pound person picking up a small car. Carrying it 7 to 8 miles on his back, and then climbing the tallest mountain while still carrying the car. How much weight can an ant carry? Ants are incredibly strong in relation to their size. Most ants can carry objects 10 to 20 times their own weight. And some ants can carry objects up to 50 times their own weight. Ants are able to carry these objects great distances and even climb trees while carrying them. This is comparable to a 100-pound person picking up a small car. Carrying it 7 to 8 miles on his back, 
and then climbing the tallest mountain while still carrying the car. How many vertebrae are in the neck of a giraffe? A giraffe neck has seven vertebrae, the same as other mammals, but the vertebrae are greatly elongated. How many vertebrae are in the neck of a giraffe? A giraffe neck has seven vertebrae, the same as other mammals, but the vertebrae are greatly elongated. What are the problems an animal must overcome to move? In contrast to other organisms, animals are able to move. The two forces an animal overcomes to move are gravity and friction. Aquatic animals do not have much difficulty overcoming gravity, since they are buoyant in water. However, because water is dense, the problem of resistance, friction, is greater for these animals. Many of them have sleek shapes to help them swim. Terrestrial animals tend to have fewer problems with friction. Since air poses fewer problems of resistance than does water. However, terrestrial animals must work harder to overcome gravity. What are the problems an animal must overcome to move? In contrast to other organisms, animals are able to move. The two forces an animal overcomes to move are gravity and friction. Aquatic animals do not have much difficulty overcoming gravity, since they are buoyant in water. However, because water is dense, the problem of resistance, friction, is greater for these animals. Many of them have sleek shapes to help them swim. Terrestrial animals tend to have fewer problems with friction. Since air poses fewer problems of resistance than does water. However, terrestrial animals must work harder to overcome gravity. Which animals can run faster than a human? The cheetah, the fastest mammal, can accelerate from 0 to 45 miles per hour, 64 kilometers per hour. In two seconds, it has been timed at speeds of 70 miles per hour, 112 kilometers per hour, over short distances. In most chases cheetahs average around 40 miles per hour, 63 kilometers per hour. Humans can run very short distances at almost 28 miles per hour, 45 kilometers per hour, maximum. Most of the speeds given in the table below are for distances of 0.25 mi, 0.4 kilometers. Which animals can run faster than a human?
the cheetah, the fastest mammal, can accelerate from 0 to 45 miles per hour, 64 kilometers per hour. In two seconds, it has been timed at speeds of 70 miles per hour, 112 kilometers per hour, over short distances. In most chases cheetahs average around 40 miles per hour, 63 kilometers per hour. Humans can run very short distances at almost 28 miles per hour, 45 kilometers per hour, maximum. Most of the speeds given in the table below are for distances of 0.25 mi, 0.4 kilometers.